students, messages from my students. When they tell me I have graduated, you know, some of them go and put it on the Facebook without my knowing. They celebrate their graduation and thank me on Facebook. That's what they have been doing. But uh, there are special students that have done this foundation proud. Many of them have been graduated, probably their master's degree, but they all and over time. But this foundation is 40 years old this year. So we've trained the doctors, engineers, lawyers, architects, and so on and so forth. So uh, we are very happy. I received a message uh, some months, I don't know the months. One doctor, Juliana, who met the Phineas. Did she come? Yeah. Where is she? Come. This uh, somebody who has done me proud. I said she was come. This, uh, this girl you are seeing, I asked the Falakita to make sure that she attends. Because uh, I saw what she did at the University of Port Harcourt uh, Medical School. Uh, that's where we turned her. She graduated in medicine and won a lot of awards and best by medical students in medicine. Um, I wanted to get her to uh, give this account before his auction. But um, but I just called you out. There was the boy who wanted to be shot and retired from, uh, from here. So um, I, I'm, I'm just presenting her as uh, somebody we are very proud to have produced as a medical doctor. So congratulations. That's how we continue the ceremony. Uh, there is another young lady, Nene um, Ilochi. And yeah, come over here. I saw you coming in with your son. I said something about her. Um, Nene, you know that she's coming out with her son. Um, it's from Dede. I don't know where she married to now. Eben, Eben. Eben, 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 Eben. Big boy. This young lady, I didn't know her from anything. But when I was in my struggle to go to the Senate, and uh, even before then, I've been, I've been reading about her articles about me. I didn't know her. And one day, I found her number. I called her and said, who are you? She told me she's Nene Ilochi. Uh, I asked her, what are you doing? She, she was then a student at UNICEF. I said, okay. Uh, when she finished her first degree, I asked her, what do you want to do? She said, she wants to do master's degree. I said, okay, I think you are putting my scholarship for you to go and do master's degree. She did her master's degree and finished in flying colors. <laughs> then, because of the love I have for her, the type of things this young lady was writing in her letters to me about Igbo people, about Igbo people, uh, I found her to be very conscious of her uh, uh, origin. I said, this is the type of person I would like to support, to grow, to anything God can carry her to. Uh, I said, what next? He said, she would like to do PhD. I said, OK, go on. PhD. She went on and uh, finished her PhD in flying colors again. Yeah. So this is uh, Dr. Rene. You know, she was going to Anuku. There was a day I was driving out. She was at this gate with uh, was it her husband, her parents. He was married there when she had finished her PhD. She said, they were coming to thank me. I was in my car, already going out. I said, please, next time. You know, and that was it. Um, today, I said, I wanted to use her as an example to all of you here. You know, 
if you uh, if I need to succeed, you succeed. So this is a doctor, Nene, uh, and who me, you know, she, eh? with a bouncing baby boy, you know. So we're happy. Uh, so that's a, with so many of them, some of them made first class, a lot. Um, did masters again through this foundation, and I get free employed. I have a lot of them like that. So my joy is to promote them, to be empowered as young children, and they will go to anything they are trying to be. That's the essence of this foundation. So I'm very happy. Uh, they have explained it now that uh, there is this wonderful academic program, but I am certain that. Um, when I went to the Senate in 2018, I gave uh, 76 students university scholarship from one of our centers in the district. We did it 10 times, the local government, 70. And through the uh, appeals made by some parents, I was able to take some beyond the number, and they got to 76. Um, we paid for them 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. We paid for them. I placed them on 100,000 per annum, even though their fees, some of them paid 50,000, according to school. But I said I'm not change that figure. So that if you take 100,000, pay your school fee, you support yourself with the parents. Buy books and other things. So today, um, eight people joined the scholarship then at uh, maybe second year. From what we have audited now, eight people have graduated already. So we have a balance of 68 on it. From the list we have, from my office, my campaign office. When I didn't go back to the Senate in 2019, I transferred them to the scholarship foundation. We were paying, we were paying them through the office. So we started paying them through this foundation. Uh, I've uh, asked for a chairman. He told me that uh, what they are getting is far more than other of their colleagues in the university. I said they are special scholarship students. So then they continue with 100,000. We will pay for them in September, October. Those four year programs will be done. Remain those within. Architecture and medicine. You see Sylvia here? Sylvia Okoe from Greenport. She's a medical student. Okay, you're not here. Uh -huh. So I know some of them that are really medicine. They will still be with us for another two years by September. So we'll continue to do this. I've insisted before that everybody must attend our annual event, even my scholarship. The reason is simple. Uh, we have also found out that there are people who pay their school fees for, and when they go out, they deny that they are being sponsored by the foundation. Some of them have been making comments. Uh, they deny. Uh, 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 so, uh, this is a special uh, assistant to go one of the other. He was my student of this foundation. He, he did the first degree and did master's degree. And uh, he's, an, he's an entrepreneur now. He's a sick man. You know, I did one and I grew for him. <laughs> but because they are very attached to me, what is the, the man that took uh, prayer on the first one? I do. Yes, he's a fire master. From uh, all sense, uh, no, but no, 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 I turned in my foundation to graduates, but they are deeply involved in what we do. So they are always angry when they see some of these students do some of the things they do. They are from the community here. And I said, parents should be accompanying their works to this place, so I know from where their children are going to school. I don't know those I train, but it, 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 
important that anybody who passes through this foundation should be proud of it. The person should be proud uh, of it. And because I'm not demanding anything in return. The only thing I do is that I say that the bishop gave you charge. When you succeed, remember, remember other people. I know that I get people randomly. Some places I go to, I see someone that is in need. I will move to the compassion and I take and tell them to take. They will come. Papakita. You will surprise the new name. <laughs> this is the song of my very good friend, Ebu Namuka, who died uh, of, on, on two unfortunate circumstances. I went to see them at the foundation and I looked at them. I said, The only thing I can do to my friend is to take some of his children and train. So that's why they and um, I took two of them. And the elder sister. Oh, so you are here? I thought uh, you are in the body school. Yes. That's the daughter. So we took them. That was last year. Yes. Uh, after the burial. So they are here. And I promised them I would change them up in that So because of the COVID, because of the COVID, um, I started paying their fees directly from my pocket, uh, not the foundation. So when my aunt uh, 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 tells me that uh, the fees are due, I'll send money to her. She'll go and pay. So they are doing well in school. Today, I'm formally handing over, handing them over to Father Peter. So that the group of communication, I've paid for their two times now. How many? Three times. I paid for three times. So next academic year, they will start coming here to take the payments. I won't be sending money that way again. So we are here to read this out. Uh, I want my friend to be happy. You know. Uh, and I assure you, children, you will be fine, okay? So after they read this out today, so I won't waste time more. Uh, my uh, I will uh, say that uh, the, the draft I have here, you use it in this order. Pay for the 68 senatorial uh, students. That will be 6.8 million. Uh, this take I have here is a bank draft, not check. Um, it's, um, it's about 2 million. This is 10 million. When you pay 68, 100,000, you have uh, 3.2 million to be need to pay your other people. And then do proper verification. Let us know, let us know those who are really appreciating the work we are doing for them. When we identify them, this 3.2 million, I have my students here from Red How many of them? How are you? Stand up. One, two, three, four, five. Eh? How many? Seven. Only five came. So, uh, they are my. Uh, from my. my <laughs> so, make sure uh, that the two goes with their, their fees from this morning. But I assure you that if you do proper verification of these things, you get me the balance. Within this week, I will pay it again. I know it may be another four million or so, but I don't want to complete that money until I'm sure of these people. We are now we are not sure not sure of again. If you verify them, then uh, let me see the record. But this is an advance payment to you, ten million naira. Thank you very much. So you all bless everybody here, and uh, I wish you God's protection always. I wish you God's protection always. I just yes, God bless you. Um, thank you, my Lord.
to add a, uh, a commitment of my wife to the welfare of people who are not her children. I looked at she wasn't here. Uh, I want to people, students, beneficiaries of this foundation, pray more for my wife than myself. Why I say so is that even though we've lived for too long, that one year now, but I can always give public testimony of her life. She gets more worried than myself over this scholarship, uh, reminding me that this is what is happening, this person is calling, let's do everything and pay. So sometimes, I, I don't want to uh, continue saying it, we deny ourselves of certain things to make sure that we meet their pay, and it's their, her sacrifice that is responsible for that. Otherwise, nobody can continue doing it. When things change, my wife will change, but she doesn't change. So pray for me more than you pray for me. Thank you. We thank the Evans Nether, Sir Victor, women, and wife, Professor Jeremy, for this wonderful gift. Uh, my brother and Evans Nether, I'm a young girl, but she wish she granted. But I also never see her up, and yeah, we will hear you for whatever we are like. Where is she now? Man, now by April, well, presentation by Tori, man. Now, I'm going to get a like Tori, who I was in there. But I want Dr. Juliana, who met to make her presentation here before his lordship, which he has granted. Uh, to you and to address us. I know a mere validatory speech today, telling us uh, how he got into the scholarship scheme, uh, what his benefits, and Papaya Moro at the peak of her education. All finish you. All lose you that game. But thanks to our manager. She's back. And fully back. I want to invite Dr. Juliana Ume from Etinanka to you. She will do that. She will do that. Thank you so much, Papa. Good afternoon, everybody. Please permit me to stand on existing protocols. We are very special. Very special. Good afternoon, His Lordship, and all the priests present here. Good afternoon, our big daddy, Senator Victor Ume, and all our parents, and my dear, beloved fellow beneficiaries of Ume Scholarship. My name is Dr. Juliana Ume. I am from Italy. I, I want to thank this family. I want to thank the ref, ably chaired by very Reverend Father Peter Valentine is here for this privilege to say thank you. And I'm going to title this little speech, Tales from My Heart. Having grown up as a child, partly in Omo in Itinanka, just a walkable distance from Angulu and partly in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, I had the privilege that most of my peers did not have. I say this as a privilege because you would agree with me that some village-like events are better experienced than imagined. On most days after block rosary, in the evenings, as was our routine as kids raised in Catholic homes to attend the block rosary, we played and exchanged some playful jokes and happy vibes. We had a common playful game I personally enjoyed as a child. The sole aim of this game, Onyoga Tobea, was to make sure that the touch didn't end with you. So it was expected that for one not to lose in this game, you should ensure you are not the last to be touched any evening after prayers while going home. So what this means is that once anyone touched you, you would run off and make sure to touch another child. And of course, we were kids, all less than 10 years. So we had lots of physical energy to dispense, especially when it came to playful games as Onyoga Tobea. 
ladies and gentlemen, two years from this period of growing up, I passed the Federal Common Entrance Examination and left the village for a boarding school somewhere in Bidak, Niger State. Life in Federal Government Girls College Bidak was full of uncertainties. One of the things that sustained me and kept me strong for the six years of my secondary education in the land I never knew existed except for the sojourn of academic pursuit was the mindset I built from that our childhood game, Onyoga Tobea, such that whenever I felt challenged or intimidated by the demands of boarding school or hostel life, like some difficult class assignments or even something as little as having to take a cold bath in the morning during the Hamatan weather. So under those conditions, I would just muster strength and whisper to myself, and before you know it, I would cross that hurdle and I would move on. Gradually, I grew up and this act of resilience grew with me. I remember countless of times answering adults' commonest question, what would you like to be when you grow up? Before that question was even completed, I would respond, medical doctor. I wished it, I wanted it. I prayed for it, I hoped for it, and I worked to have it. So the dream of becoming a medical doctor was a childhood fantasy that has gradually turned out to be my reality. All thanks to God and to our big daddy, Muhammad K. <laughs> After my secondary education, faith found me in school of midwifery, certainly not my choice. And while doing my midwifery program, I would remember, hmm, and I kept focused. I performed so well in the School of Midwifery Governor Abuja that the National Midwifery Council of Nigeria gave me some American sponsored training here in Nigeria, somewhere in Bomb, Chin Hospital, Place to State. After that, I had some state and national awards as the champion of maternal survival. I didn't let the glories that came with my midwifery achievements come my vision. I kept telling myself, I was being a university graduate and as a medical doctor. Academic excellence has been a part of me because I always wanted to make my father proud for how hard he worked to give us decent lives. So I was a typical daddy's girl. After the euphoria of my brilliant outcome as a registered midwife, I wrote down and started afresh as a year one medical student in the University of Port Harcourt, River State. While I left for school, my father was already frequenting the teaching hospital, Gobalada Abuja, where he consulted his physician. So one of my biggest fantasies as a medical student was how I would appear someday in my ward coat and give my daddy some, you know, doctor, doctor attention. So that, I did not know, was only going to remain a fantasy. Fast forward to my fifth year in medical school. So, fast forward to my fifth year in medical school, I had the saddest day in my life. On the seventh day of November 2017, my dearest father, my hero, Christopher Chikwemeka Ume, my award winning dad, he was rushed to the Chin Hospital Abuja, but he did not make it for that day's roll call. Life was over for him. The news got to me in school, and of course, your guess is as good as mine. It broke me. I lost my taste for school, and for the first time, I paused to ask myself if becoming a medical doctor after midwifery achievement was even necessary. After all, my biggest fantasy, my motivation, my drive was gone. Needless to say that my family's socioeconomic status somehow dwindled alongside my dad's health. So many things were not in place. Managing through financially became really stiff for us. The death of my father left me living the past few years of my life with a vacuum in my heart. A vacuum that has tried to mess with the resilience I built as a girl child. Some days I fight off tears. Some days I let them flow. Indeed, no one knows what loss is until a first-hand experience is had. No one also knows what it will be like to live without a loved one until the owner of life takes a roll call and counts yours out for that day, sorrowfully did. So the month we returned to bury my father, my little sister Ujuma and I planned that the best way to ensure that I survived the financial demands of medical school with this little support that came from home was to look for a part-time job with my military license. So when I made the decision to combine work and school, my heart was troubled because 
Let's go school was already a full plate for me. I was then so lean and I looked at myself with a sort of pity as to what I would look like by the time I combined those two things. But I was determined and I kept encouraging myself that I must finish the journey. The only thing it was going to take was to sleep lesser than I already did and to stretch my tiny self a little more. So my sister and I were on the lookout for anyone we could approach for recommendations to a hospital in Port Harcourt, where my school is, and so the person would allow me to work that time for a reasonable pay to foot my medical school bills. We didn't know how we were going to do so, but we believed. One fateful Sunday, we attended Mass at St. Patrick's at Bolizivo, and our big daddy was at that Mass. That was my first time of seeing him. I've heard his name. He addressed the congregation and I thought to myself, this is my Messiah. I looked at my younger sister, where she sat, away from me, and she got the message. After that match, when we walked back home to Monopo, we were strategizing on how to get a copy of my CV to her medicine, and we kept praying. As we made inquiries on how to assess our big daddy, we kept my mom out of the whole plan for fear that she would break down further because her husband's corpse was still in the mortuary and her daughters were looking for how to get money. After all our inquiries, we summoned courage and went to Agony to see him and Father Peter was in there. Already, his thunderous voice on the phone made me want to jump up on my feet while right taking his call. And by the time I saw him, my goodness, my fear was confirmed. This unfriendly voice I heard on the phone belonging to this unfriendly satchel. <laughs> no way. I whispered to my baby sister, Juma, Juma, Yakaina, this is not going to work. For all of us, privileged, under this umbrella of women, if you would agree with me that the appearance and the person of Father Peter Valentine's Day is a typical example of the cliche, do not judge a book by its cover. He's so stern looking, yet soft, kind, fatherly, compassionate, and very determined to help the <laughs> Father, God bless you. The moment I sat down to talk to Father Peter Uzeze, it took him only a few seconds and he said, You know him now? He said, Stop talking. I'm going to take it to Hamadike. Can you make this request to him yourself? I said, Yes, I can do that. The day we met our big daddy, I saw goodness, love for humanity. I saw humility. I saw generosity and kindness. All of these in one human being. My God, how can a very wealthy man be this approachable? I thought to myself. So many persons were talking to our They were taking turns to talk to our big daddy. And when I got closer and he heard Juliana Ume, it's Nanka. He looked at me a second time and he said something to me. Well, I didn't know what to expect because I'd never approached anyone for help in my life. I was so scared and helpless. Umunem, what our big dad or Hamadike said to me that day changed my life. For the best. This is someone he has never met. He didn't even know I existed until that moment. Our big daddy looked at me and said, you need a job to complete your education. No, my dear, I will pay your fees when you graduate. <laughs> the moment I heard this, I used to think I'm a confident person, but when I heard it, I froze. I didn't know something like that existed. How can somebody be this kind? He just don't even know me. From that day till date, all expense paid. I dropped my details as a beneficiary on that woman, went back to Fort Harcourt, not to look for a job, but to sit down like my fellow students and study. So I told myself, that for this great sacrifice done by our big daddy, Lord, help me to have an outstanding performance with which to say thank you because no amount of words can appreciate this huge kindness. My final MBA's examination came, and for the first time in the history of Medical School of University of Port Harcourt, River State, distinctions were recorded in internal medicine and surgery, and both were recorded by me. While I was called for, while I was called forth during our induction ceremony for my awards, I told myself, the true owner of these awards is not here. But I will walk up to that stage, collect them, and bring them home to the rightful owner. Thanks to God, we share same surnames. 
So, Daddy, here are the letters of proof for your award of distinctions in internal medicine and surgery as Dr. Ume. While I go to Lagos in a few days to resume my housemanship here, to touch lives and help mankind, every patient that tells me God bless you or thank you actually says them to you because I don't know how this great deed would have been done so smoothly without your support. God bless you immensely. Before I take my stage, His Lordship, I have a few words from my mother, Bridget Ume. From the day my sister and I decided to let my mother know about our plans to help get me financial support for my medical training until date, Ohamadike has become a household name. My mother prays and sings your name to God. When the news about this meeting got to her, she embraced it with mixed feelings. She wished she could be here to at least say thank you. But for the insecurities on our roads, the thought of coming from Abuja was a bit scary, and she said I should tell you this. That as she took off the load from her, even without her knowing it, that this is how the heavens will continue to make sure nothing ill befalls you and your beautiful family. And to our big mommy, she says I should tell her this. Mommy, yes, you're coming at the right time. Richard Ome said I should tell you, Noma, that your generations will forever be good. Being such a great help me for daddy. I feel so delighted to see this day. You know why? I feel like a daddy's girl again. Because nature has given me another chance to be born. You know, God does not make mistakes. God always knew that Senator Victor Ome will someday become my daddy. So he allowed me to come from an Ome family. The only difference, perhaps, is that while the Ume in Etinanka are just here, why they bested me, the Ume in Abuluzibo has nurtured me. To my fellow Ume beneficiaries, I encourage you all to be at your best always. The best thank you any one of us can give to our big daddy is, is that of excellence and outstanding performance. While we keep praying Almighty God, to grant his heart desires and to keep him safe in sound health. We should be good ambassadors of this great woman family wherever we go. Let us make sure we have the vibe. Thank you very much. Long live Senator Victor Ume. Long live Ume family. Long live Ume family. Long live the world of Ume, every chair wherever and a Peter Valentine is in. Long live Ume Agolizigo. Sign. Dr. Diana Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A round of applause for us, no? Yes, that's all right. I'm a Zioka. I am a Zioka. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What's the story, Jason? I'm not too many people. Some of us lose on I am I am. But I can see Congratulations, doctor. It's not only who can ask the doctor. I do Darling, other beneficiaries. As doctor was speaking, my heart was burning. I was praying and wishing. By next year, by God's grace, let's have more of doctors, doctors, doctors to men. Hard work pays. I have to go concrete examples. Trust God. Allow God to lead you. Allow God to provide. He will always provide for you. Oh God, I need them. I stand the Jesus Christ in the morning. Amen. And you put the other next year and the mass. Konya wani nonyero no. Oh yeah. 